is in the house. Hey, what's shaking? Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Sean. How are you doing? Lecture tonight. Lectures tonight is a doozy. It's about embracing healthy anger. And we don't really have a lot of knowledge around anger, so I'm like, oh, this is perfect. And I thought I, what I thought I would do is divide it up into two lectures. So tonight we're going to get some awareness. You're going to have some epiphanies, some ahas. And then next week we're going to look at some tools and techniques to help you when you're in the thick of it and you really want to kill somebody. <laughs> I'm assuming you've wanted to kill somebody sometime. Not literally, of course, but like that feeling, okay? So... Let me do get me get some of the commercials out of the way to get us rocking and rolling. Very excited to be here. I just got off a plane. Had an amazing weekend with my son in California. I hadn't been to his place in over a year, you know, since COVID. So it was just really good. And I felt really safe with the masks in place at the airport and all that. So doing really good. Hi, Terry. I see you guys. Hi, Angie. Yay! Anger is one of my favorite topics. And uh, got to give a huge shout out to General Motors. General Motors is our biggest supporter of the work that we do because the work that we do is applicable not only in your personal life, but and also in the workplace. And uh, it's kind of like somebody, in, let's say you and somebody are up for a job or a promotion and, uh, and you really want this job. And you, the, the person that's up against with you with the job you don't like him very much, it happens, you know, we're human. And then he gets the job and now he's your boss. And you get some forgiveness stuff to work out. So those are the kinds of things that we do that General Motors sees the value in, in the, the courses and classes and techniques that we use. So huge shout out to General Motors. I also wanna share shout out one of our sharing partners here on Facebook, her name is Anna Grace Taylor. You guys know her. You see me share stuff from her all the time here on, on Project Forgive. I just want to give a shout out to her book. It shows you see it backwards. It says, Messages of Grace, 111 Notes of Love and Guidance from Your Angels. I'll be sure to put a link up for you if this is something that interests you to check out her book. She's just a lovely soul. And uh, I've learned so much from her and her page is one of my favorite pages. So thank you, Anna Grace. We love you. Um, always give out prizes. Tonight I'm going to give out prizes. I usually last about 20 minutes or so. I see you guys are showing up. Hi, Jeannie. And tonight, I'm very excited. Our official essential oils are complete. Here's what they look like. They even come with um, little uh, sterling silver charms on them. Forgiveness charm. And of course, our thing is doves. We love doves. Doves represent forgiveness and grace and mercy. And, um, and we got our labels are on. And this essential oil is a special blend. It's a forgiveness blend. If you've never used essential oils, oh, that's, it's going to be a new epiphany for you. And it's 100% pure. It's thera 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 therapeutic grade. Um, this is a 10 milliliter bottle. They aren't for sale yet on our website. We have to, we'll be taking pictures of them and such to get them on the website, get them up here on Facebook. Someone's winning this tonight. And we are going to put a bonus gift in of one of our masks, our Kindness is Contagious masks, because many places you still have to wear a mask. Um, some grocery stores, airport, things like that. And um, when we sell it, we'll be putting it up for sale this week. It's going to be $27, and it includes shipping. So you can get an essential oil, $27 no hala, no shipping costs here in the U.S., and then you'll get a mask. And um, we price these very specifically low cost so people have access to tools. This would be a tool to help with some of the anger stuff too. And um, because we really want you to have access and our profit margins are very small on purpose. Um, we make money in different ways like from folks like our big sponsors like General Motors or Cotever AgriScience and that's how we stay afloat. So when we put products up, it's really to support you. And um, that's why we do what we do, especially the, the no shipping costs. Now, tonight, someone's going to win this, and they're also going to get a mask, and I'll ship it out to you tomorrow. The only caveat is you've got to be in the U.S. to win. So, when I, at, the, at the end of this, I will do a little game for someone to win, and someone will win. Uh, what else? If you're new to us, tell us. Just say, hey, I'm brand spanking new, and I'm so happy to be here, or whatever. And, um, and our, our community will welcome you. We're so glad you're here. Tonight's topic is anger. I'm almost there. Two more things to say. Um, stars, if you give us stars, when you, when you give us stars, it really makes a difference for us because our live workshops that will be closed workshops starting in June, the last Wednesday of June, will 
I should be able to have that up by the end of this week, and I'll be able to talk more about it next Monday. Um, we're going to be doing monthly workshops, very low cost. We haven't set the price yet, but I think it's going to be $7. And if $7 is a hardship for you, we will figure out a way, because we have sponsors that will help accommodate that. And we think $7 is conducive for folks. And it's a closed workshop, which means once it's full, it's full. People cannot come on that have never been on Project Forgive and just say comments. Because sometimes we're sharing really vulnerable stuff, right? And sometimes somebody extraneously shows up on our page while we're doing a live and saying and swears and says stuff and they tell me I need to put on a new outfit or whatever they say. Or get off my feet. I can't stand your, your face on my feet. That stuff happens. It's part of the game here on Facebook. And when we do the private workshops, it's a, just this the sacred space of safety and we can do some real work and you actually get to talk out this stuff and role play and do some of the things that we actually do here during the lectures that we can't do in a regular workshop so that's coming by the end of june very excited about that um we do have a joy is a habit facebook group if you want to get some extra joy in your feed be sure to sign up for our, our um our group it's it's very easy to join i'll put up the link for that too also, if you work for a company that's really progressive like General Motors and brings in amazing trainers and speakers, whether it's virtual or live, we are now starting to do live workshops again, which is exciting. Um, be sure to pass our name off to them, okay? To those, when I say them, I mean like your DE&I person or your marketing person or your leadership person, whoever, or even sometimes HR, whoever brings in speakers like us to come in and make a difference, okay? I see you guys are joining, yay! All right, making the unconscious conscious. This is all about anger tonight. Embracing healthy anger, and yes, there is such a thing. And a lot of the material I got was seminal work, early seminal academic work. I'm an academic, and, um, and his name is Dr. Char Charles Spielberger. And uh, he's done some amazing work on anger, and it was really fun to like discover more versions or lists or whatever, and that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. Tonight is part one of two parts. We're gonna look at and unpack anger a little bit and so you can start noticing things this next week and then next week we'll provide some tools, okay? All right. Um, whether you have got have trauma from childhood, some of us have that, not everyone does, but some of us do, or the chaos of the world with systemic racism conversations, pain with the police, pain with politics, pain with COVID. There's a lot of chaos going on. Frustration over a coworker um, or fury, furious at something hurtful that your partner or someone you lo deeply love has deeply hurt you. Anger is a deeply uncomfortable feeling to be with. Anger is difficult. And as soon as we feel anger, our immediate reaction is to puke it out, dump it, do whatever we can, suppress it. We do all kinds of things around anger. And tonight, I'm hoping that this lecture will give you a new perception around anger. I see new folks are coming in. I'll come look at the, what you guys are saying here in just a minute, okay? Um, many of us have been taught that anger, the way to do, that anger is bad. We've been taught anger is bad. And we've never been taught how to pro properly deal with anger or em emote it or share it or work it out. We've never been taught that. And anger is actually demonized. I would say anger is demonized um, and treated as a bad emotion with no useful purpose. And um, anger is not negative. Anger is natural and normal. And I'm going to unpack a little bit so you can start embracing some of these new ways to look at it. One of my mantras with my anger is, anger is my friend. I say that a lot. Like if I can feel that rush, my chest tightens up, I feel really angry, I get that surge. I take a deep breath say to myself, anger is my friend. Because anger really is a warning system to let us know that our boundaries have been violated or that we need to talk about this because this is a recurring thing that doesn't feel good and, you know, I want to be close to you. So there's many reasons and benefits of anger. And um, anger can be a useful sign of other emotions. And that's typically what I find as a researcher and as a documentarian that we say, I'm so angry about that when actually we feel either frustrated about it, helpless about it, frightened about it. And most of the time when we feel afraid or, hope, or hopeless or helpless, or we believe that we're being taken advantage of, that's a biggie. 
anger, if we have a feeling that someone took advantage of us, the anger card will come up. Not helpless, like, oh my gosh, they took advantage of me. We, it's, it's more about, about anger. And um, so here's a perfect example for me. Last week, many of you messaged us and said, hey, I'm getting these weird messages from Project Forgive about donating $2,700 or whatever. It was a fake account. Somebody started a fake account. So be watch on Instagram and on Facebook. Make sure that it's us because we reported them and all that. If you do see a fake account on us, please tell them that it's a fake account. I was so angry. And the feeling, what, what it was, was taken advantage of. Like we've worked for, you know, six, seven years now creating Project Forgive. And someone's going to capitalize on all that work that we've done and actually give mixed messages and ask for money. I, um, that I was really ticked off. So holding on to that anger, it was a warning system. Okay, what are you going to do about it? And when, when you're angry and you can take a deep breath and calm yourself, that's when the real solutions of how to manage it comes up. Okay, so when it comes to anger, where we get in trouble is in its intensity. You know, there's, um, and that's where it gets its bad rap. Like, that was the last straw, damn it. And you just lose it. Been there, right? I'm assuming you've been there, okay? Now, we, we already know there's tons of research about that high intensity anger that it causes your heart rate to rise, your blood pressure to rise. It's a, you get that spike of adrenaline. And I would be remiss as a feminist rhetorician if I didn't say that anger is particularly demonized in women, particularly black women, that angry, that stereotype of the angry black woman. Um, you might have heard of a woman being called a shrill or hysterical for expressing her outrage. Um, this, this researcher that I really enjoyed, what was her name? Her name is something Chapel. Let me look and see where I got her. Dr. Rashana Chapel. I thought, oh, she's got Sean in there. Dr. Rashana Chapel. Um, she talks about this this expressing outrage and that it's especially true for black women. And if we have any sort of emotion that is not quiet and sweet as a woman, then we can come off as angry. And then on the other, on the flip side, traditional gender roles indicate that angry men are problem solvers and get things done. So that dichotomy um, is so present and pre prevalent in our culture. And it, I just didn't feel good if I didn't mention that. I just needed to for my own self, okay? So here's the deal. Four types of anger. Four types of anger. Oh, Maria, I'm with you on the monster, the anger monster taking over. So we're going to unpack that to help you with that. It's helping me too tremendously. I'm really, really looking at anger. Um, let me tell you what the four are. Don't worry, you don't have to take notes. All my notes are written out. I will copy and paste and put them in after the lecture so you have access to everything, okay? Um, there's aggressive anger, there's passive aggressive, there's suppressive, and then there's assertive. The top three are the ones that get you in trouble. The assertive anger is the one that's when we're in our, I like to say, my. I'm in my right mind right now, or I'm grounded, and I can really talk about this. So let me go through these four really quick, okay? So aggressive anger is the full throttle intensity. When you just lose it and you like, hey, mother effer. <laughs> I'm being silly, sorry, I don't mean to say it like that. But like, hey, you, how dare you do that? Or, you know, I can't believe it, the last straw. Um, and it, here's the thing, in fact, anger seems to be followed by aggression by only 10%. So we equate anger and violence, culturally, we do that. And the research shows that really high aggression is only about 10% of the time if you look at a scale of, of anger, and lots of aggression occurs without anger. Lots of aggression occurs without anger, and I'm like, wow. And so, of course, aggression is like throwing things and hitting and screaming at the top of your lungs, okay? Now, passive-aggressive anger, um, I don't know if you've ever experienced it or have done it yourself. Yeah, um, oh, I see the garbage is, you know, his husband said he was going to take out the garbage. Well, the, I see the garbage over there, honey. Passive aggressive. It's a blaming energy. It's a sulking energy. It's, it's not your highest self. When you're in this place, you are so not in your highest self. You know exactly what I'm talking about. The suppression anger. That's one that I can really relate to, too. If you eat your emotions, anybody else do that? Oh, yeah. Ton Reese's peanut butter cups, easy to do on a dime. 
it's a way to soothe and calm that anger to make it go away. We suppress it. We hold it in. And anger turned inward. Anger turned inward in the suppressive dynamic causes hypertension, high blood pressure, and even depression. So we don't want that either, right? So then we got the healthy anger called assertive anger. It's being assertive. It means you're confronting others with kindness. Yes, you can be angry and confront someone with kindness, conveying your frustration without blaming them and not, insist, and not insisting on being right. It's possible. Okay, we're going to learn how to do it. All right. The benefits of anger, especially the assertive type, is that you can come to a higher understanding in your relationship. Pardon me. Me and my husband, we had a blowout, like highest level of aggress aggressive anger a month ago. And we bottomed out on it. We're like, okay, are we going to be pinballs in the pinball machine, just bouncing off each other's anger? Or are we going to really unpack this, see what's really bothering each other, and start talking about this in a way as best friends, as lovers, as to a couple that really adores each other and it's working <laughs> it's really working now sometimes the higher understanding can come from a blowout so i don't like this is up to you to use your intuition what's your gut what will work i've my mother died many of you know my mother died last year and um i was her caregiver for that last year of her life my mother was tough i had a tough mama um actually an, ac an accurate adjective would be vicious. I had a vicious mother. I did. Some of us were graced with that in some ways because there were a lot of beautiful lessons out of it for sure. She's very critical, very condescending, very shaming. And I was at her house. I was her caretaker that last year, so I was with her a lot. And uh, she was asking me to move the TV and move the antenna. She has these all these systems set up in her house that you had to have the TV a certain way for you to get reception. I mean, there was all these things. And she, we were, and she was asking me to adjust things and adjust this. No, that's wrong. Do this, blah, blah. And I've never in my life yelled at my mother, ever. And I lost it with her. It was like the fifth thing she said in a matter of five minutes, and I couldn't take it. Okay, that's kind of what happened a month ago with me and my husband. And I just screamed at her. I said, God damn it, excuse my language. I can't believe you're talking to me like this. I can't take it. You can't keep treating me like shit. Excuse, like, for those that are new, I normally don't swear. This feels appropriate this time, okay? So pardon the language. And rarely do I say God's name in vain. And if I sang my, God's name in vain to my mother was truly blasphemous and she's actually the one I learned not to use God's name in vain like you know if you're frustrated or whatever that's one of my things I don't I correct the grandchildren too and my mom knew I was so upset and that blow up changed everything that was one of the significant markers of our relationship in that last year together and um we unpacked it and talked about it so sometimes a blowout especially with someone you deeply love can lead to a whole lot of beauty, a whole lot of beauty. And, um, and sometimes, and we're human, we're not gonna do this perfect, okay, right? So how to cope in a constructive way? Starting the conversation of embracing healthy anger. Let me see what you guys are saying, so if there's something I need to say, lots of comments tonight. Anger is a biggie, isn't it? Let me just see if I need to acknowledge something. I see you guys are here, welcome, I'm so glad you're here. Catherine, welcome. Oh, Terry, I love that you're welcome. Love that you're welcoming, Sandra. Hi, Colleen. I see you guys. Maria, it's so good to see you and have you be here. Let's see what else. Anybody else? Absolutely, Elizabeth, you're spot on. It's your warning system. It anchors your internal warning system that's telling you something needs to change or a boundary is being violated. It's what we do with that anger that's what's so important, right? Anger is so critical for all of us. You're spot on. Let's see. Hi, Donna. I see you. See you. Hello. Hi, Lori. Yeah, I can totally relate to being afraid of not just having someone, Maria saying this about being angry, not just someone being angry at you, but also afraid of your own anger, that if you unleash it, you're going to kill people, right? That's not what happens. It's very similar to grief. Sometimes when you're grieving, you think, 
wow, if I start crying, I'm never gonna stop. And it feels like that. And usually there's a lot of research on even grief and how long spurts of grief will last. And sometimes it can last as much as four and a half minutes. And when you say it out loud, that's really not a long time. When you're in deep grief, it can feel like it. Trust me, I know you guys know. All of us have gone through some kind of grief. And so it comes in waves. And the same thing is true for anger. Okay, let's see. And then it's also what habits have you created in your communication that has people come together with anger or go apart with anger? Because anger is your warning system that you need to manage something for intimacy. I know. It's just crazy when you think about it. You're welcome, Doreen. I see you guys. Yep, I'm with you. You guys are noticing. Joan says she suppresses. I do that too. Let's see if there's anything else. <laughs> Am I for real, Simon? I, I hope so. Okay. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I, I would, uh, uh, it does take a lot of grace to apply this. You're so spot on. Miss Alice, I'm with you. Hey, Joe, it's shaking. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty scared people off with the, yes, Deborah, you're spot on. Narcissism shows up a lot here. Yeah, Maria, you know what? I love your question. It's perfect. Why do we have to get so angry for the other person to be open to talk about it? What I love is accountability and responsibility because this is the only place that I can make change is with me. So I try many things, many different ways, many times because maybe I think I said something a certain way, but it didn't work. And I'm interested in solutions, right? I'm with you, Claudia. That's brilliant. Okay, great. So coping on, in a constructive way. It's about clarity of your needs. You know, I'm a consultant. I work with a lot of companies. And when I ask teams or people that I'm working with, what do you need? What do you really want? We tend to go with and focus on what we don't want, not what we want. And it's the difference when you focus on what you want versus what you don't want is like night and day in communication. I got an example. I put a... a Typed up an example on a garbage. Garbage is not a thing in my house. My husband, that's his job and he takes care of it beautifully. But I think we can all relate to garbage. It's very different when I say to my husband or a child or a teenager, hey, you didn't take out the garbage. Versus, there's a second option. You know what, honey? I feel loved and supported when you do what you say you're going to do, like taking out the garbage. Would you go take care of that for me? It makes me feel so loved. really clear that I want him to take out the garbage. I want, I want the garbage to happen and I want us all to, to be best friends, even in the midst of frustration, right? Another mantra I use besides anger is my friend, I say things like, you use anger, don't let it use you, Dr. Sean. Use anger, don't let it use you. And that actually consciously lets me take a breath and get really present so I can have some facility around that amygdala part of my brain, that part of my brain that acts like a lizard, that like when your hand's on the stove and you react really quick, your body takes the hand off. Anger, we're not being burned, but it feels like that. And if I approach it like, okay, don't take your hand off the burner, sit with this anger and see what it's telling you, right? See what it's telling you. I found a, an article by a Dr. Bernard Goldman. I'll put the link up. His article was so good. He does a lot of work on anger and what healthy anger really is. And I, I'm a, I, this, I copied and pasted what, one thing that he wrote, and I'll make sure I put up the article. He said, when angry, we direct our attention outward. Like, take out the garbage. We either take it outward on the person or the situation that contributes to our anger. In this way, being caught up like in a whirlwind of anger diminishes awareness of what's going on for us, what's going on for our bodies, hence why we sometimes overeat or smoke or drink too much, okay? That's one of the reasons. And the inherent attention, attention associated with anger, you know, these feelings of threat and other negative feelings that precede it, such moments are absent of reflection. To me, the highest level of unpacking anger is to reflect and observe 
what is going on for me that I'm so freaking angry? He didn't take out the garbage. Is it because I haven't been asking for what I want all along or expressing it? What is really going on with this dumb bag of garbage, okay? Because to have this much anger about a garbage bag is kind of silly. So that ability, healthy anger, demands reflection, demands you to look internally. Um, and it causes you to take out that feeling of being taken advantage of. Okay, so here's this piece. I feel taken advantage of on my Instagram account. Somebody copied it. Let me put it over here and not wallow in the whirlwind of it or the chaos of it. It's almost like an addiction in some ways. I want to be careful with my words because I am a doctor and I don't literally need an addiction, but it can feel like you're just driven towards it to latch on to that feeling, that intensity. Sometimes those intense feelings allow us to feel alive, even if it's anger, because sometimes we feel very dead in our lives. Can anybody relate to that? And um, healthy anger demands reflection. It's this capacity to pause and assess whether the threat we feel is real and eminent, like your hand's about to be burned on the stove, to determine the urgency of the situation, like the garbage bag, it's a little more urgent if the garbage truck <laughs> is coming down the street, okay? I think that's funny, okay? And to res we wanna respond appropriately and constructively. So this healthy anger demands reflection. So what I'm gonna ask you to do this week is just start noticing. There's nothing to do, there's nothing to fix. Just start noticing how your body feels when you're so angry. Like let's say somebody did something, you can feel that whoosh up your body. Take some internal reflection. Okay, I am really ticked off right now. Okay, I can be with that. All right, is it really about the garbage bag? Am I not expressing something to this person I care about? What is truly going on with me? That is where the power is. That is where the power is. Um, he listed, Dr. Um, Goldman was his name. Was his name Dr. Goldman? Yeah, Bernard Goldman, the article. I'll put it up. He also um, gave eight tips for what healthy anger is, and I'll put those up. And um, there is this tie-in to forgiveness. To me, it always comes up and comes back to forgiveness. And research regarding self-compassion or self-forgiveness increases resilience, stability, and decreases your own personal negative self-evaluations, your self-defensiveness. And when you have more access to forgiveness, you're less likely to get that in that intensity, aggressive rage. Make sense? Um, so I wish this were so easy and I can say, hey, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. We're not, this is complicated stuff. This is complicated. And we're complicated beings. And to unpack it takes courage, takes maturity, takes patience, takes self-compassion. And um, you will get this, I promise, you will. So because making the unconscious conscious is really our primary theme at Project Forgive, I wanna say one more thing before I get ready to give away a present and give away a prize. Boundaries, boundaries are so critical. And we have a tendency to use boundaries as punishment. Boundaries are not punishment. Boundaries are a window or a door to be closer to the people you love. You're letting them know what works for you and what doesn't work for you and asking for what you need. And to use it as a whipping post using, well, my boundary is you can't do blah, blah. That is a misuse of power. That is a, when you use boundaries to punish, it's a misuse of power. Don't get me wrong, sometimes you get to set really strong boundaries with people you're not interested in being close with, okay? Like your neighbor who wants to borrow your lawnmower every day. You gotta set some really clear boundaries, especially if they keep asking. Not that that ever happened to me. I'm joking, it has. Um, and how do you create those boundaries? Um, so boundary setting is not punishment, it's to bring you closer together. And if you have any examples, questions, or ideas, message me. I'll make sure I approach them and include them next week when we do part two and look at tools and techniques, okay? Um, all right, who's ready to win a prize? 
And the, oh, Robin, I just so thought cute that you say boundaries seem so lonely. Boundaries are my friend. I love boundaries. Boundaries allow me to be deeply close to the people I love, especially when I do it in a powerful way. Now, it's 6.59. I'm going into a class. I have a class here in another minute. So here's what we're going to do for the prize. Um, our essential oils. Mask. First person to put a heart in my feed is going to win this prize. Got to be in the U.S. First person to put a heart. I don't care if you write heart, if you put an ugly heart, you put a broken heart, some kind of heart, someone's going to win this prize, and you must be in the U.S. And for that person, what you're going to do, and I, it's not fair, it's so not fair, okay, because it shows up in my feed differently than yours. Terry, it's you. It's you, Terry. So go ahead and message me and get, make sure I have your address and your email so that I can make sure you can keep track of the shipping. So next week. We are going to do a healthy anger part two and look at some tools and techniques, especially around the conversation of forgiveness. And um, if you find this broadcast helpful, please share us. Let folks know about us. Share us. The more you share us, and even our articles especially, we do some really great articles on forgiveness and relationship building. It really makes a difference with our corporate partners because they say, wow, you reach a lot of people. And we're like, yes, we do because we do great stuff. <laughs> okay, so mwah, mwah, mwah. I will talk to you soon. Big love. Sandra, thank you for the stars. I'll make sure I look at all the messages from today. I'll put this up in another hour because I'm going into another class. That's cl It's a closed class, sorry. And um, and then I'll make sure I incorporate that for next week when we look at tools and, and stuff. Okay, big love. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.